Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm here to do my cash clip slash divider um, kind of setup, and then I'm also going to do some of my extra little schedules that I like to do in the new Erin Condren Deluxe Planner. So um, let's go ahead and get into it. As of right now, we only have like three main cash clips or cash dividers, and those are eating out, household, and hair. So um, I did go to the bank and I grabbed $305 because that's how much it's going to be for this month. Um, I usually give us about $40 per week for eating out. Um, for household, it kind of just depends on what I think we're going to need. I know that we're going to need toilet paper and Q-tips and stuff like that. So I just wanted to make sure we'd have plenty. And then the hair category, um, I've gotten a qu questions about before. 15, so half of it goes towards Jason's haircut, which he gets every every month. And then the other 15 goes towards getting my eyebrows done. So that's kind of the makeup of everything. So for eating out, we're gonna need $200. So 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. And something that I've been doing that's really helped us with kind of staying on budget when it comes to like eating out every week because like I said I try and give us $40 per week um, is actually splitting them up and putting little paper clips on each week's little allowance and that way once the money is gone out of one of these paper clips I know that's it. Um, the other thing that I did with these last month that really helped a lot was only putting one of them in my wallet each time or each, each, each week. That way when it was time um, to go out and let's say we only had like $10 left, we knew that's all we had. So I'm going to do the same thing this month and I'm hoping that it will help a lot. So $20.40 for one week. These paper clips are rose gold. They're super cute, and I got these from Michaels. I don't know if they still have them, but um, it was in with like some of their summer stuff, so they might not, but I really like them. They kind of go with everything. So I'm just putting little dividers. I believe there are five weekends in, in September, and I usually base this amount off of the weekends, which is kind of confusing because I base our grocery budget off of our um, the Sundays. So it's usually like Friday and Saturday I based up, base it off of. So we have one, two, three, four, five. So five little clips for eating out. I do have my dividers here. I'm gonna switch up and not use my little side purse from the Air Bradley. I'm gonna use a wallet and just keep it in my school bag instead um, for the meantime. So I do have my dividers here, but I need to find my wallet. I have no idea where my other wallet went. So that's in that little category. And then the next thing that we have is household. And like I said, for that one, we have $75. So 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 75. So that will all go in the household envelope. And then the last $30 should be all for hair. So let's just make sure that that's that. 10, 15, 20, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. So this is all good to go. When Jason is ready to go get his hair cut, I can just give him $15. When I'm ready to get my eyebrows done, it'll be all good to go. So that is all good. Some of the other um, little dividers that I have, one is for allowance, and um, I've gotten questions about this as well, so I figured I'd address it. For allowance, we usually get um, $15 each per week, and that money comes out of Jason's part-time paycheck. So Jason does work part-time, it can vary between like eight hours to like 12 hours a week. So not a ton, but it does help him get some adult interaction. And um, we usually use a lot of that money for like house, house and extra stuff. So part of that money goes towards our allowance, 
which is nice. So that you don't ever see in my budget because that's kind of separate. We try and keep that money separate. We don't rely on that money. Um, so that's kind of that. The other ones that I have here, um, this one is for Chase, this one is for BMO, those are the two banks that we have. And so if I need, if I buy anything online and I need to put money back into the bank, I always put them in these dividers. That way I know, okay, I have $20 that needs to go back in Chase. That's where, you know, where I put it. So those are my little dividers. Those are all good to go. So now we can get into all of the little additional trackers and schedules and little things like that. So the first thing that I want to do is set up my variable income and that one is pretty simple because I honestly just have a couple different things um, for that. So I'm going to go ahead and fast forward you guys through this part because it's more of just write, like drawing out lines and then I'll kind of show you. I'm going to do this like a similar setup as last time. Um, but I'm just going to fast forward you guys through that and then we'll get into the other two pages, which includes my weekly check-in page as well. This variable income um, setup is all complete. I basically, every time I feel like I use kind of the same stuff, but I use this um, new sticker pad or sticker book from Erin Condren. This is the teacher one that they just came out with. I also use some of the petite planner um, budget like add-on sheets. These are the icons. And I feel like I can usually get a lot of what I need from those two. So basically at the top what I did is just put in variable income and just to make it kind of cute, I like to have a total incoming, a total outgoing, and then the total amount that I, I bring over to my budget, which is here, variable income. So that is where that number will go. I feel like it's probably confusing for people who aren't me, but since I've like put it together, it's not that confusing. So that's basically the leftover money that I have after I after I pay for everything I need to pay for for my channel. So that's just like a quick look place where I can fill in the amounts. So obviously I'll get the total incoming from here so the actual amount will be there. And then at the bottom I just have a spending tracker so when I do giveaways and I need to mail stuff out I would put um, that here. I would also put any Planner Kate sticker here plan arcade stickers here. A lot of people um, ask about how I budget for those. Those are all through like my business income if that makes sense. So I don't actually have a budget for them but it's a business expense so it flows through here. So that's kind of where you see it. Um, and then obviously the total from here would be go would go for the total outgoing and that's how I'll get what my actual variable income that's go income that's going into my budget if that makes sense. So that page is all good. The next page that I'm going to work on is my weekly check-in page and a lot of times I'm just kind of looking back to see what I did in the past. So it looks like I did this last time. I'm trying to figure out if I want to do something a little different and if I just if I want to like deal with it now or if I just want to like do it how I've been doing it I'm not sure I'm not exactly sure how I want to do it quite yet but I think like this works really nice are there let's see one two three four five so I do need the five boxes this time and Let's see. So I'll need all of them. I won't have a total spot, which will be okay. 
Okay. I think I know what I'm going to do. Yeah, I think I'm good. Okay, so I'm going to fast forward you guys through that as well. Um, and then I'll kind of check back in with you guys and tell you what I used and all of that.
that page is always really time consuming to do. But basically what I did is very similar to what I've done in the past. I have my weekly boxes here and then the categories that I like to track are groceries, gas, eating out, and unbudgeted. Those are the the categories that swing our budget quite a bit if we're over so I wanted to keep track of those. Groceries, I've said this before, we use our debit card or our credit card. We don't have cash clips or envelopes for the for that just because of the way that we go grocery shopping for us that's just not really what we want to do but for eating out that is something that that is a way um, that we're able to kind of manage better I just don't think groceries is um, appropriate for cash envelopes for us personally um, for gas again not something that you can control a ton but it's just nice to know that you're tracking it and how much you have left Unbudgeted, obviously, it's good to know, you know, if there's something big, like with our roof being done, that was $400 more than what we expected. So you know, you know, as soon as you see that, when you check it here, that you're gonna be $400 over budget, you're gonna save $400 less than what you thought you were going to save. So um, I really like doing this page for that reason, because these items tend to, um, just fluctuate a little bit more than other things, if that makes sense. So I took my mild liner. Um, I have a bunch of these. I got these from Target. They also have them on Amazon, but I like to just highlight the categories or the um, headers just so that they kind of stand out a little bit more. Um, I always have a spend column. I always have remaining. So I calculate how much we spent for each category and then I deduct that from the total amount that we have budgeted. And that gives us our remaining balance. I added a few um, like decorative pieces just to keep me interested and that includes some skinny washi from the Planner Cake Kit um, add-on. This is kit 86AD if you're interested. And then I used an Erin Condren dual tip marker for the header and then the sticker book again for the little check mark. The only other thing that I need to do is what I do on the next page um, and that is just to kind of keep track of what's going on with Jason's paycheck um, from Ace. So you can kind of see this here. I like to just put the main items that we have um, going out and it's like the same amount each week. Jason gets paid on Fridays, so I know every week when I'm getting money out that I have to deduct $45. Of course, that changes depending on what's going on. And then sometimes when we owe stuff, um, I like to keep track of that here as well. So let's go ahead and do the ACE, the ACE stuff. And I'm gonna pull another one of these just to kind of tie everything in at the top. And I seriously, I I really love this. Uh, oops, that's not straight at all. I've really been loving these. Um, this kit from Aaron or from Planner Kate for doing the budget. It's been really nice having like all of these little pieces and tying them all in. So that's up at the top. <clears throat> I'm just going to quickly write in. Um. Ace tracking and there's not there's not a ton going on so we have the item which we have swim and preschool and then we have the monthly amount and then the weekly amount so it's nothing too crazy but just something that I like to kind of keep track of okay and the monthly amount is always the same but the weekly amount can kind of change depending on um, how many weeks there are, how many Fridays there are. There are. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and do total. 
You could probably hear Macy fussing. Okay, so the monthly amount is $86 for swim. And for preschool, it is $139. And that's a total of $225. So there are one, two, three, four. There are four weeks in September. So that means the weekly amount, <clears throat> the total amount is going to be $56.25. So you can tell the months that there are less Fridays, it's obviously way more expensive. It's about a little over ten dollars um, more expensive and I'm just gonna quickly do the weekly amount per item so twenty one dollars and fifty cents for swim and for preschool it is thirty four dollars and seventy five cents so <clears throat> those are the main things that I like to set up in addition to my budget my and my sinking funds which you guys see in separate videos. Um, let me know what you guys track in these new pages if you guys have the new pages. Um, I personally really like the setup that I have. There is obviously some like legwork that you have to do beforehand, but it's not too much. Like it's definitely doable. And I think that it really works, which is good because I never want something in my planners or in like my, especially my budget planner that doesn't work for me. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you guys have any questions about Planner Kate, Erin Condren, budgeting, or stuff like that, leave them down below, and I'll try and get back to you guys as soon as I can. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys.